Each time. Each time. <coughs> Jesus answered with what God had already said. What God had already told him. We have the Word. We carry around the Bible and you know, we think it's good to have a church and we think it's good to have in Sunday school. But God is telling us right here, showing us with an example that is, this is our armor. This is our sword. This is our weapon against Satan. Because everything you hear is true. And there's not a word in here Satan wants to hear. Amen. Amen. And if you say enough of it, <coughs> he's going to leave. Amen. Jesus Christ proved that to us. That if we would, we, we, we read that verse to uh, 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 1 Timothy 2 15, study and show thyself approved. Approved to who? How about Satan? Boy, we can stand up in front of Satan with the Word of God in our heart. I will guarantee you he ain't going to hang around us. When he, when he makes these offers, we have something that is much, much, much better. And it's like the promises of God that are written in this Bible. Not only do we know that Satan is real, that Satan is bold enough to come after us. We know that Jesus Christ defeated him. Amen. We know that Jesus didn't bow to him one second. He didn't give in one little bitty nothing. And he was held up, not by his flesh, not by the mood he was in, not by the place he was in, but by the word that was in his heart. By the word that was in his heart. Nothing that Satan ever puts in front of us is going to be good. It may seem good, but it's not going to be good for us. What God gives is going to be true. There's a big difference between God and Satan. And that's what we find in this temptation, in this place. We will always see a big difference between God and Satan. I want to tell you that God, that Satan many times has tried to act like God and tried to, to be in the place of God. He has tried to manipulate Christians in so many ways. But you will always be, if you're a true Christian, and if you are a true follower of Christ, you'll be able to tell the difference between God and Satan. Why? Because there's a big difference. <clears throat> Satan, I promise you, is after you to hurt you. But God, God is always there, always there to help us. Amen. Amen. I can tell when somebody just starts coming around. I got friends that come around, and every time they come around, they want something. That's it. That's the only reason they come around. I, I, they, they always tell me they're my friend. They do. But somewhere within the conversation, they won't never wait till another day. It won't be the second trip. The first time I see them, somewhere in the conversation, they need something. Amen. I'm telling you, I've got people that are like that that are, that are supposedly my friends. <laughs> and man, I, I, you know what? After a while, you know, I put them on that list. It's not really friends. Amen. You understand that? Yes. Friends aren't after you for what they can get out of you. Amen. And then I got people that call me just, just to see how I'm doing. Amen. You understand that? You can see the difference even in the people of the world, even in who they serve. I can see that. I can see the difference. There's people that really, truly love me and call me and, and stop by and see me and, and we go to, go out and eat together and, and things like that just to be around each other. And I can see God in your heart. And then I can see people that will manipulate you and use you and, and get something out of you and then leave you. They won't see you again until they need something again. And I can tell they don't need really serve God. God's not really in their heart. God's 
not written in their heart. Sad, but it's true. Satan delivers the same way. You know, he'll come around and he'll mess something up real good in your life and then he's gone. And after you dig it out and straighten it out and, and, the, and the fellowship of the Lord brings you back out and you continue trying to get closer and closer to God, Satan notices that and he's going to come back to put you in the exact same place. That's all he wants. He doesn't want a relationship. He just wants to knock you down. He'd kill you if God let him. You know what we need to see? Satan's around. The church needs to know tonight that Satan's real. That Satan really, really exists. And today that he's not just in some far off wilderness or down in the ground, but you know what? It's sad that he's even in the churches today. He has found his way in any way he can. And we've dealt with it. And we'll deal with it again. Because He's going to keep coming back. He doesn't want us to follow God. He doesn't want us to have a relationship with God. He doesn't want us to see how good God is. He wants us to be down. He wants us to either be down hurting so bad in such a big rut that we don't know what to do, or He wants us to be so rich and or so full of the world we don't have time for. We need to understand tonight through the walk in the wilderness that Jesus had that Satan is so real and that He is real enough and bold enough to walk right in this church. Amen. Right in this church. You know what? He would do anything to get in our children's church. He would love to get a hold of our youth ministry. Oh, man. He sure would like to get in that women's group somehow. Oh, and just show y'all what y'all can do with that money you've got. He sure would like to get in the men's breath somehow. He just wait for somebody to invite. He would show sure love to get a hold of the preacher, of the preacher's family. Amen. He sure would like to put something between the preacher and the deacons. You know that. Amen. He sure would like to get a hold of a few members' hearts out here as they sit and try to hear the Word of God. That's how bold he is. And the only thing that's going to put him out is us to concentrate and to love and to seek and to follow the Word of God. Amen.